Good evening. The sequences are in and you can start analyzing them to your heart's content. To get to the sequences, go to the Canvas page, which is shown right here. Click on Announcements. And the first announcement is the sequencing data is now live. If you see, he's, here's everything that's in sequence. It gives you some metrics. You can see that every one of them has at least half a billion base pairs. So wonderful job, guys. We got a lot of great data out of this. If you want to refer back to the Deep Sea Isolate spreadsheet, you can click on it right here and that will take you to the spreadsheet and it will show you the strains that we have then sequenced. If you want to now get the data, here's the code. The barcodes are here, BC01 to BC11. Those are the barcodes. Here's the strain numbers. Pick the strains you want to work on. Was, is it 6, 54, 53, 1, E11, whatever, all of them, that's cool. The analysis does not take that long as you'll see. So we'll go to our special box account and we open up the box account and here is all of the data. So if you look into the summary files, let's do, oh, I don't know, BC8 and it will show you a bunch of different read length, uh, different diagrams. Lots of them will give you information about them. And what you're looking for is you want high numbers. So this one is telling you the average read on BC08 is about 13,000 base pairs. That's great. You'll see some of the reads rise as high as 100K. So really good. We got lots of good data out of that one. So if we go and we'll look at uh, BC03, for example, and if you look at the weight of the histogram of that, and you'll see we've got fantastic reads, reads here. It's about 50,000 base pairs for this one. So that's, that's a really interesting one. Lots of great data on it. So let's analyze that one. So we need the data to analyze. So if we go back here, and it was BC03, and you can read all the FASTQ files. This is the data harvested off of the min ion and then it's barcoded out. So if you click on that, it will download this. You'll actually get a thing that says, I can't do this. And then you click download, you can download it and all the FASTQ data will come down. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that data, you'll wanna to go to your KBase account, which again, you set up before you're going to want to sign in and you'll have a dashboard we're going to do a somewhat different narrative in this case we're going to do a genome assembly narrative we're going to import our we're going to bring up our fastq data we're going to assemble it with a rast this is a series of different assemblies that it does and it does it with if you go and look at this you can actually go to the info on this and you'll see what it does is it does assemblies with ASICs, Velvet, and Spades and that is three different assemblers. Then it compares those assemblies and gives you the best one to go forward with. So we're actually going to use that. Once we do ARAST, then it's very similar pipeline to, do, to what we did before. We're going to annotate the microbial assembly then we're going to build a metabolic model and finally we're going to insert our genome into a species tree and it will get, tell us where that genome fits in. Later on I'll tell you guys how to identify the 16S ribosomal RNA and make a prediction and Mark Barris is actually going to give me information on exactly how to do that. I should have those metrics by Wednesday. Right, so if we go back here and we look, this is now downloaded. So I'm gonna go show it in the finder. And then I am going to just double click on it to expand it. And you can see that these are very large files because there's a lot of base pairs there. There's our FASTQ file. And you'll see that that FASTQ file is 1.12 gigabases. So these are huge files. The first thing that we're gonna to need to do is import it. But before we do that, we're going to create a new narrative. So you go to your dashboard, you click on that new narrative button. It will create a narrative for you.
And the first thing that you want to do is do what you've done before. You go over here and you're going to click on add data. This comes out. You click on import. And you can just drag your FASTQ file over and drop it. And it will start to import your file. Again, this takes a little bit of time, it's, but it's only a few minutes. It's not too bad. Okay, our file is uploaded. So now we are going to select the format. It is a FASTQ file, so you can choose that from the menu here. And then you're going to load it into your window by pushing on the, this button right here. So we click on that and it loads it into the window. And that says import FASTQ file as reads from staging area. We can call it what we want, right? And it's got a BCV03 FASTQ file, and we can call it BC03 FASTQ reads. That's fine with me. Just hit run. It gets sent over to the server. Server launches, queues it, and pretty soon it will run it. And if you want, you can get rid of this welcome message. Just come up here. Go to the narrative, this little three dots here, say delete cell and say, are you sure? And you go, yes. Okay, it's now running. And now we wait. Our FASTQ file has now been brought into the staging area. We can now go on and start to do our analysis. And you'll see here that it's got 51,000 reads in it. That is, is a nanopore read. So we're going to shrink this down. Now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to annotate our microbial assembly and we are going to use the RAST version of this. So we can come back here and at this point we should probably annotate this. So let's call this genome analysis of we'll call it barcode O3, and we should probably look that up. Let's look that up. So barcode O3, if we go back here, is the third one, which is isolate number 14. So if we go to our deep sea isolates, that is one that is Roseovarius pacificus. So we're going to actually copy and paste that and read that. And the reason we did this is because there was no genome sequence of it. Now there is. So we'll go back here, and instead of BCO3, we're going to call that Roseovarius pacificus. All right, so we'll hit OK. Now that has a nice name. The next thing that we're going to do is genome assembly, and we want the ARAST assembler. So you go here, you scroll down, you can see it right here, and you just click on it and it brings assemble with ARAST in. And now we have to configure it. First of all, it asks you for an input object. Click on the plus and choose the BCL3 FASTQ reads. We're going to use automatic assembly. It knows what to do. And output assembly, we're going to call it Rosio Various Pacificus but we can't add a plus sign there. Let's make that an underscore and then an underscore and we're going to call it contigs. Right? Now that it's, it's all ready to go, we can just leave the advanced parameters where they are. There's no reasons you need to do anything like that. It will do it any way you want. So we'll go from there and hit run and it will start the assembly. Our assembler is now finished and we can see how exactly it did. We want to look at the quality of the assembly and that's shown in all of these analyses. And you'll see that it assembled the genomes. It said that there's only 10 contigs. When you used to do assemblies using Illumina, or when you use Illumina, you normally get between 500 and 1,000 contigs. But because our pieces are so big, you can assemble these into giant contiguous pieces of DNA. If we look at 
The largest contig, it's 5 million base pairs. So the size of E. coli genome. If you look at the total length, it's saying it's a little bit under 10 megabases. So that's about double the size of an E. coli genome. Seems reasonable. It will be interesting to compare this to other variuses, dissembled sequences to see if it's about the same size. So we've got that data. Now we have our assembled genome. We can take that data, right? So we've got that data. We close it down. Our next step is to annotate our microbial assembly. And this is very similar to what we did before. Again, we're going to use RAST, this RAST function type. And what this is, is the RAST function just is like really smart people who do this kind of stuff a lot have figured out, okay, these are the ones that work the best. So let's put them together and then decide. So we're going to use RAST, annotate microbial assembly. Click on that. It asks you what to assemble. Here's our Rosiovarius, the scientific name. We can paste that in, Rosiovarius specificus. It's a bacteria. Output object, we're going to say Rosiovarius specificus again. And so again, you can't have spaces. And then we're going to say annotation. Okay, now we're ready to go. Again, there's advanced parameters. I would just leave all of this alone and just let it go ahead and call everything, right? So click run. And our antitype microbial assembly is done. And it says it was RAS algorithm was applied. There were 29,757 genes that were encoded, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that really doesn't mean too much because it's going to repeat stuff. So then if you go here and you look at the browse features, et cetera, et cetera, this will give you a better, better idea. For example, it says like the size is 9.9 KB. It says his taxonomy is Rosia various. So it actually matched what we thought it was, right? And then we can go through and we can now take this and we can build a metabolic model. Right. So if you go to the apps, metabolic modeling, and you go to build metabolic model. Right. And again, we'll choose the genome and our genome is going to be the annotated Rosiovarius specificus genome. And then again, just leave the advanced where it is. And again, we'll put down Rosiovarius specificus and we'll call this mm for metabolic model it's all ready to go and you hit run and it goes and it sends it again and off you go when this gets done you can look at the results of it and you can make you can look for the tca cycle you can look for oxidative phosphorylation you can look for various amino acids and so you can then start exploring what it's done all right, I'm going to leave it there. Obviously, I'll be around all this week if you're working on this stuff and you have questions.